Hey, what's going on YouTube? Joe here from Metafish. Hey, uh, figured I'd show you guys vinegar eels and what I do with them. Here's an apple. The spoils of refreshing vinegar eel cultures. And you don't even have to refresh them very much. I've had them for over a year. And the, the jars were packed, still good to go. But I wanted to make enough batches. Sometimes people come over and they want to breed really small fish, killifish, rainbow fish. I like to have something available for them. So uh, yeah, I'll put my apple down, try to show you guys what I mean. For those of you who've never known about or seen vinegar eels before, they're a great food source, super tiny. I think they're smaller than micro worms or walter worms. And I, I've used them for angelfish. As soon as the angelfish are born, I like to give them a, a varied diet. You know, a lot of you uh, had to swallow. Still have a little bit in there. A lot of people know that my angelfish are really good quality, and I, I feel like I try to give them the absolute best that I can. So I think, uh, you know, feeding them vinegar eels right off the start seems to make them real healthy. All the babies turn out good. I don't know if there's anything to it. But again, a varied diet. I'm sure they have a different nutrition profile than microworms, than brine shrimp. So um, I'm going to keep feeding uh, vinegar eels. I just got a batch of blue Pinoy uh, angel, angelfish. I finally got a breeding pair. So that's what kind of uh, enticed me to do this video. And I figure why not? It's a uh, nice relaxing, it's actually Thanksgiving day. So before everybody starts showing up at my house, um, this is the activity I'm you know, just kind of working on. Just got done feeding the fish. And then uh, gonna start cooking food and cleaning up the house. So it's still early morning here. So let's see if I can't show you some of these vinegar eels. You can kind of see them bubbling at the top. It's hard for me to tell. Let's see here. They're in every one of these cultures. So I've already mixed half apple cider vinegar with the mother liquor in it. I don't know if that's required. You should be able to see some of them. This one's packed. Look at all those vinegar eels there. So this one is just loaded with vinegar eels. So here's the traditional that you've probably seen online that I've seen the most, is you take a wine bottle or any bottle with a long neck on it, you put some uh, stuffing, like pillow, uh, Joanne fabric, polyfill up at the top of the neck, and then you put uh, just your dechlorinated water up at the top. So the water, it'll bubble as the air pockets get released. So I just put the stuffing in and added the water. So it was full to the top, now some of the water has settled down into the stuffing material. But basically this is all you do is you leave this and the vinegar eels will worm their way up the stuffing into the clean um, non-vinegar water. And then you can just every day you can siphon off those vinegar eels that are up at the top trying to get the oxygen and then add more uh, dechlorinated water. And I don't know if chlorine hurts them or not with brine shrimp. Uh, you know when you hatch them, the chlorine actually helps break down the eggs and hatch the brine shrimp. So I don't know if that's the same with vinegar eels. I just use dechlorinated water here, and it seems to work fine. I don't love this method uh, because, as you can see, my Joanne Fabric stuffing uh, over time tends to fall down into the bottle. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. If I had a longer neck bottle, it would work better. So the longer neck, the better. Uh, I guess that'd be tip number one if you're going to harvest them this way. And my new and preferred method, which uh, you don't see online, super simple and easy. I just used a zip tie. Whatever way you can connect a piece of sponge, see if I can get this on film. Um, just aquarium sponge, any kind of sponge, you just connect it to something. I'm using a zip tie. I just got it wrapped around that piece of sponge and you just let it sit at the top of the culture. You would be surprised how many vinegar eels get stuck and or make their home in this sponge. This one's been sitting for a while and it's really hard to see, but there are vinegar eels just packed in there. So all you do, I could show it, but easy enough, just pull out your sponge, put it in uh, some distilled water or dechlorinated water, even tap water I'm sure would be absolutely fine. And just squeeze it a couple times, just like you're cleaning a sponge filter. And there's going to be lots of vinegar eels in that water. And then you can dump that into your baby fish tank and feed your fish with it. 
So this is my preferred method and I seem to get more vinegar eels by using just a piece of sponge and I just am using a zip tie. There might be a better way. You could just use a string, I'm sure, if you wanted to tie a string around it. But uh, yeah, and that's basically it. The only other thing you have to do, like I said, this is a 50-50 culture of apple cider vinegar. I mean, you can just buy it at the store. This is the one I'm using currently. Organic apple cider vinegar. This has the mother in it, which just means there's uh, some of the chunks of the apple left in it still. Uh, little tiny pieces. And, uh, yeah, you can just use a paper towel. Uh, the vinegar eels, you know, another thing online, they said that they have to breathe. So that's why people recommend using a paper towel with a rubber band over top so that bugs don't get in and uh, ruin your culture. And I don't know if this is true, but I don't know that they have to breathe. I had a sealed cap on one of these water bottles, this one right here. And this was sealed for nine months and there were still lots of vinegar eels swimming around and living in here and the water was almost to the top so they weren't getting any extra oxygen i don't believe so they don't need a ton of oxygen i'm sure they need some but if you cap the bottles maybe that's a test i'll do in the future i just wanted to uh, share that experience with you the vinegar eels were still fine in this culture for nine months with a capped water bottle and it was sealed um, you could squeeze it and no air would escape out of that bottle. You could tip it upside down. So, yeah, and that's basically it. I'm going to just put coffee filters. I got some coffee filters over there on the tops of these. Same as a uh, paper towel with a rubber band. And I'm going to start feeding my fish some more vinegar eels. I just put a few pieces of fresh apples. So this is a new culture right here. It's half and half, and then you just add a little from an existing culture that has vinegar eels, and they'll populate your new culture. Half water, half apple cider vinegar. This is more little pieces of apple than I'm sure I need. I put three in there. It uh, doesn't really seem to matter. I put three in this one, and it's been doing amazing. This one's just packed full now after a couple months. And uh, I just put a couple in each of these. They're still floating up there, floating at the top. So... So there you go, long video, eh, it wasn't too bad. So if this helped, uh, if you learned anything from this video or you just enjoy seeing my experience and comparing it to your own fish keeping experience, uh, give this video a like. We appreciate all the subscriptions. Uh, we just hit a thousand, huge milestone. So thanks everybody, happy Thanksgiving.